All right, thanks everyone for coming tonight. Small group, but anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, having a video later on, we might be able to reach a few more people that actually then watch it later on. Cool. So tonight, um, I'll be uh, talking. Um, it was my slide. Why is it not showing my presentation? Hmm. That's a bit odd. Hmm. Doesn't want to show my presentation for some reason. Um, bizarre. It has all my slides on it. <laughs> but it's, it's a bit strange. All right, in that case, I think I'll just share my screen and we'll go through there then. Um, Just okay. okay, all right. Well, we'll do it like that then. I uh, can't see you, so if you're typing anything in chat, I hope Ian actually then does that. Cool, all right. So that's sync thing. That's um, something I actually wanted to present last month, but then it was just Ian and me, so we'll do it this time around again. One thing um, that was popping up on my Android phone on the F Droid App Store was the Sync Thing app, and I thought, "What is that?" So I actually had a look, and it turns out it's a peer-to-peer -peer continuous file synchronization um, tool, and it's available on various platforms. So it allows you to synchronize files between two or more computers in real time safely protected from prying eyes, according to the website, and the data is, is your data alone, and you deserve to choose where it is stored, whether it is shared with some third party, and how it's transmitted over the internet. So that's according to their website, which is very nice advertising, of course. Um, and if every, anyone's been sort of like following things over the last few years, um, it sounded a little bit like what uh, BitTorrent uh, came up with um, for syncing. Um, it's also like a distributed um, sync tool called Resilio. And I think it was initially called BitTorrent Sync or something. And then they renamed it. Um, and the similarity between, well, the common ground between the two of them is that both use peer-to-peer -peer for syncing. So it can be distributed, so it doesn't have to be just a single server where you're syncing to, you can basically distribute things across a multitude of machines. Um, BitTorrent uses a proprietary protocol, so nobody knows what it is. It's closed source. Who knows what they're doing, whether it's secure or not, or whether they have some um, holes in their security, who knows. Um, with SyncThing, that's actually an open and documented protocol, and it's open source itself, so it's all on GitHub. Um, under sync thing, if you wanted to have a look. And um, yeah, so I mean, I do tend to prefer open protocols and open source over something proprietary like that. I mean, we know that um, things, uh, security through obscurity is not, not a very strong um, tool, uh, approach for actually securing something. Right, and my first thought was, oh, cool, I could maybe use it as a backup tool. And um, however, on their FAQs, Frequently Asked Questions, they're putting down, um, is that an ideal backup application? Well, sync thing is not a great backup application because all changes to your files, like modifications, deletions, and whatnot, will be propagated to all your devices immediately. So if you accidentally delete something, then it gets deleted on all the other machines as well. I mean, you can enable versioning, but um, they encourage sort of not to use that for syncing, uh, for backups. Um, rather use other tools and um, to keep your data safe and then also prevent, <laughs> prevent any mistakes on, 
on, on your own part or, or on the sync thing programmers part. So I found that interesting. Um, but there's still use cases. I mean, um, I so far predominantly use rsync, um, sort of like to back up my phone or computer or laptop onto a little um, Raspberry Pi with a large disk attached. Um, but rsync is unidirectional. So if I wanted to have uh, a bidirectional sync, so there's other tools that allow that. But um, sync thing offers that out of the box, having bidirectional. So if you change something on one machine, it gets propagated to the other ones, depending on how you set it up. Um, so if you're using for source code and whatnot, I wouldn't actually use it. I would use things like Git. Um, but if you're having sort of um, large binary files, which are not great for uh, version control, like for instance, photos or videos, um, and you want to have that in sync with your laptop, um, then you could, for instance, use it. So that's something I actually want to set up um, that um, I can um, sync uh, between phone and laptop. Um, so I'm not um, having to sort of like uh, grab files from the server again, but um, the master copy is sort of like on the phone and that then sort of like propagates um, onto my laptop as well. But yeah, so I thought that could be quite a neat application for doing that. Now, how does it work? So they basically listed three things, private, encrypted, and authenticated. So with private, um, none of your data is actually stored anywhere else other than your computers, the ones that you actually allow to do that. Um, there's no central server that can be compromised um, legally or legally, unless of course somebody breaks into your own network. But I think um, that everything is sort of like uh, gone burgers anyway. Um, encrypted, so all communication um, is secured using TLS. And the encryption is uh, basically includes perfect forward secrecy to prevent any eavesdropper from ever gaining access to your data. So it's just quite good. Um, and then finally, authenticated. So every device is identified by a strong cryptographic certificate, TLS certificate. And only devices you have explicitly allowed can connect to your devices, which is quite neat because you don't want your device randomly showing up on the internet and people sort of like, um, kind of like BitTorrenting your files that you accidentally shared with the world. Um, with BitTorrent, you have no control over who's actually getting that. Um, however, here with SyncThing, you can actually control where it's actually going. So with the setup, um, all you need to do is either sort of like um, on your Linux box or do a sudo app get um, sync thing or via Pacman if you're on Arch or DevOS. Um, on Android, you can install it through the F-Droid App Store. And then you basically just need to start the sync thing client on the host and each host will get a unique ID. And then you can define the directory that you want to sync <clears throat> and which direction, whether it's bi-directional receiving or descending. And then you can say what hosts you want to sync with. And um, interesting feature on Android, you can enable the sync, for instance, only when you are on a specific Wi-Fi. So for instance, this would be the case, you come home, you connect to your home Wi-Fi and uh, you've been out and about taking a lot of pictures and videos, and then it starts automatically syncing to your server and laptop, uh, updating those with new things that you've actually um, taken. But this wouldn't happen if you are connecting to another public Wi-Fi or work Wi-Fi, because then it knows, ah, that's the wrong SSID. I'll keep quiet and not do anything. Initially, um, so in order to find clients, um, there's a public discovery server. So basically, um, that one knows about a hash of your clients. You can run that also yourself, but um, I wasn't looking into that for the time being. So now you probably ask mm, public discovery server because they said, uh, isn't that supposed to be private and nobody knows about stuff? So it turns out that the IDs that each device actually gets is um, just a SHA-256 TLS hash. Um, 
there's nothing really sensitive about it. Um, the ID links, links to an IP, but it cannot be used to establish a connection. Um, you actually have to know uh, each other's ID in order to actually establish a connection. So there's no need actually to keep your uh, device ID secret. Makes it easier for setting up because that's a publicly known server um, and you don't have to start fluffing around um, setting up your own discovery server. But if you don't want anything to leak out or anyone even know that you're using SyncThing by any chance, then you can run your own discovery server and this document and how to do that. Cool. Okay, so I have three... Um, hosts here. So my main one is my Android phone um, on which I'm running Termux, um, which runs on SSH, runs there on port 8022. I have a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian, <coughs> oh sorry, Raspberry Pi OS now called, and a laptop with Endeavor OS. All right. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go through a few slides because the setup is a little bit hard to show. However, um, Ian showed me a cool um, tool screen copy, which you can run um, and basically display what's happening on your phone. So if I had known that a little bit earlier, <laughs> I would have done it through the phone and done a live uh, demo. But yeah, anyway, we have a setup like that now. So I'm just going to talk a few of your slides and then we can um, see something happening on the command line as well. All right, so um, sync things installed on my phone. I have I can start syncing on my Raspberry Pi and I can then log into, um, as long as it's opened up that port on port 8384 on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I need to configure an interface user because by default it has no user and password, which is not recommended. So we do that. And then on your phone, you can then um, create a folder, and which I did. Um, it's just called the sync thing test. Um, and I put some images in there. And um, yeah, and then I can, in the web interface that I've opened up, um, in the top right corner, which you'll see later in a sec, um, there's a, an action and there's an action called show ID, which displays the QR code that you can see on the screen. And then I can basically go with my phone. Um, I want to add a device <clears throat> and then I can, it starts the camera and I can basically scan the QR code then. Um, and then it basically adds, oh, cool, this is the device, blah, 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 and I've edited it on my phone. And it takes a little while to propagate um, that my Raspberry Pi then also gets notified. Ooh, there is um, the SMG930F, that's my um, Samsung phone, um, wants to connect. Do you want to add this device? So unless you've actually done something, you should probably always ignore. But in this case, I actually wanted to. So I can click on Add Device here. Um, and once it's done, um, it pops up a dialog. And it shows me the device ID, um, the device name, and um, a few other bits in there. But we're not looking into that. Cool. And then I can accept basically this device um, on my um, on my phone. Um, I can then um, go on my back in my app, I can see my sync thing test. So with each folder, you can specify with what uh, machines you actually want to synchronize that with. Um, so, for instance, if you want to synchronize your holiday photos with your wife's laptop, then you can do that. But you probably don't want to synchronize your um, Ubuntu ISO files uh, with your wife as well. So you can really specifically target certain files and folders that you actually want to uh, synchronize with other machines. So you basically click on the sync thing test, um, which opens up the dialog on the right hand side. And then you can see all the servers that have connected to your machine and you can say well enable please syncing further down you can also specify whether this is um, the folder type send in receive receive or only send um, we'll leave it at the default sending and receiving <clears throat> cool um, 
then yep, then the um, phone pushes to the Raspberry Pi um, after we've enabled it, um, saying, oh, hey, I've got this folder uh, that I want to share with you. Do you want to add it? I said, yes, please. So we can click on the add. And then we can see um, some details about the folder, uh, folder label, ID, and whatnot, and also where you actually want to have it stored. I'll just use the default, which is in your home directory, and you can click by set on save. If you really want to, before hitting save, you could also um, enable file versioning, but um, we don't really need that for the time being. But you could play around with. So if it's things that could change and you would want to, similar to like Google Docs, uh, where you can have documents that have revisions, you might want to maybe um, try to give it a go and see what it looks like. Cool. And once we're in exiting that dialog after adding the folder, we can see over here on the left hand side that we've added the sync thing test folder. So on the bottom right, we can see there's my Samsung phone. And up here, we can see that the phone is currently syncing to the laptop. And then after a while, that's finished. Cool. That's the end of the presentation as in PowerPoint slides. I'll just exit that. Um, any questions so far? No? Okay. Cool. Um, so I have, I presume you can see my, um, Oh, you can see all my um, uh, terminals here. So the top two, um, the top left one is sync thing running on my Raspberry Pi. On the top right, that's sync thing running on my laptop. On the bottom left here, I am um, in an SSH session on my Android phone. Um, so you can see, oops. I don't lose my session. Oh, that's not so good. It lost the int my Wi-Fi headset. All right, cool. Ah, here we go. Let's try that again. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Cool. All right. Now, um, if I have a look, um, in the sync thing folder, I can see I have more files in here. Um, I can um, create a test text file, um, and then we can have a look what's happening over here. Oh, cool. So you can see up here. The latest change was test txt on the Raspberry Pi. If I go on the Raspberry Pi, see, yep, 
my test txt has shown up and if I output it, yep, there's really hello world in there. So cool. So that seems to work. Um, I can try also changing um, If I now look in the bottom left of my con, I can see that it synchronized things immediately back as well. Cool. So that works between my um, Raspberry Pi and my phone. Now I want to have a laptop as sort of like part of the group as well that being it's being synced to so I go on actions here and there's the show ID I then go into my um, app I'm adding a device and I scan the QR code Accept the phone and the device. Yeah. All right. And then I'm adding that. I can close that dialog. Oh, ah, yeah. So we can see that on my, so the 127 or that's my laptop here. Yeah. Um, you can see that the Samsung phone wants to uh, connect, so I can click on Add. Yeah, I don't want to do file versioning, but yeah, please put it in my home directory. Cool, and you can see syncing. And if I go on my home directory, yeah, so you can see that there is five files. Best editor. Um, yeah. Font. yeah, so cool. So that worked. And now we can try. Changing that again. There's 43 bytes now. So on our Raspberry Pi. Um, ah, yep, so on our phone, that's up to date. And on the Raspberry Pi, it is as well. So you can see it's actually quite responsive with the updates. Cool. And yeah, um, that's already it to it for tonight for my end. Um, I'll just stop sharing my screen. Cool. Any questions? Ian, you can turn your headset on again if you want to. Okay. No, that's that's quite good. I think I might um, have a, have a use for it next thing. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's, yeah. I'm I'm very surprised at the performance, and I mean, this was actually mm. first time that I was doing testing, sort of like between three. Um, machines and yeah, it's actually quite good. I'm quite pleased with that. So, but yeah, I mean, you have to be careful, sort of like how you set it up. If you stuff something up, uh, it's definitely good to have a separate backup of your data as well. If you stuff something up, so you can grab it back from your backup. But if you want to synchronize uh, among multiple machines, 
I think this is a really great tool. Yeah. Cool. All right. In that case, I think I'll stop the recording.